Welcome back. My name is Kit. And I'm Steve. And this is Streaming Things, a TV and film podcast where we talk about a variety of different TV shows and film properties. And sometimes the patrons are able to mandate that we watch a particular movie. This one was selected by, I believe, Stephen the Fifth of his name. Stephen the Fifth. And it is Gremlins 2. The new batch. We talked about Gremlins the first one, I don't know, two, three months ago. I don't know when that was. Yeah, it was a Time couple flies. months ago. It was on Patreon. Go check it out. It was a very fun episode. Was that a patron only episode? It was, yeah. I think oh. it was a poll winner, if I remember correctly. You are better at remembering those types of things. For Somehow. Sure. But they just wanted more hot Gremlins action. Yeah. Gremlins 2 is typically more beloved of the two. It's a is little it wilder, really? a little zanier. Yeah. Is it really? Amongst Film nerds, I'd say mm. so, yeah. I know on IMDb, it, Gremlins 2 ranks lower than the first one on IMDb, at least. Really? Yeah, I think uh, the first one has like a 7.3, and this one has like a 6.8. Maybe so it's not a big disparity, but... Talking out my ass, like Ace Ventura, mm. and it's just amongst like the film nerds that this movie is appreciated, and mm. so I've got a bias there. Maybe, I don't know. Like, right in. I would love to hear other people's opinions on whether, whether they uh, I prefer don't one or two. I don't want to hear other people's Old opinions. batch or new batch. Just listen to me. This is, what the, <laughs> okay. this is my show. That's true, yeah. No one else's opinion here. No, not even mine. <laughs> <laughs> Least of all, Steve. <laughs> Least of all, Steve. Get out of here, you <laughs> asshole. What did you think about? Never mind. <laughs> Just remembered, I don't care. <laughs> but you can join that crew and, and be a part of the Discord, the big family, the stream fiends by going to patreon.com slash streaming things and subscribing at a variety of tiers. You'll notice in the show notes, there's a new merch store link. It's been updated. A whole bunch of extra fun merch. If you've got a little extra, little extra cheddar and you want to splurge on a cool hat that looks like mm -hmm. the one I wear or maybe a nice they, shirt. Yeah, it lo there really is a hat. The, pe the people at West River Printing Company, they made some great merch, including a hat that looks like Kit's famous A24 hat, but it has streaming things on it. And we're working on undies. We are, <laughs> we're working on we are undies. hard at work. Well, you know how everybody posts the merch that, that they're wearing in our Discord? Oh, that would be a nightmare. It's just, it's just <laughs> my way of having a good time. I, I can just hear the mods right now going, no. <laughs> Technically, actually, I can hear it's game. I can hear uh, Garrett and Jessica from West River going, no. <laughs> I don't want to make undies. <laughs> yes. Just message me privately. Don't worry about Steve. We got this. In my opinion, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this earlier. We're getting undies. Uh, but yeah, we're talking about Gremlins 2 today, and uh, I'm really excited about this because it's a wonky movie, a wild yeah, movie. Absolutely. And I got to tell you, Steve, I do be creeping the LBXD. I live on Letterboxd. You do. So I got a little sneak peek at how you feel about this film. Yeah. What's your history with Gremlins 2, the new batch? And what was it like watching it this week for the show? All right. I have to be honest with you. I've never seen Gremlins 2 in the Oh, bench. really? Never seen it. I like everyone. You never do that on your first viewing. It's, you broke your rule. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, so, for some, some context, everyone would always joke like Gremlins 2, arguably the best Gremlins. Mm -hmm. And I would always kind of play along with it because I think that's a fun bit. But honestly, I didn't know because I've never seen Gremlins 2. I, 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 all I knew about Gremlins 2 was that the Gremlins are back and they're back in a city. And I knew there was like a news station at one point that they were in. Like there was like a, a frame in my mind of the brain gremlin being interviewed on yes. a TV set. Like that's the that's the thing I always think of when this movie would come up. But I'd never seen it before uh, because gremlin, the first gremlins is a fun movie, but it's not one I watch a lot. I'm not super in like I, I like that movie. I, I like gremlins, but it's not like one of those like, oh, I got to go back and watch gremlins. So I was never uh, I, ne I didn't have the incentive to go watch gremlins, too. But. Stephen V was like, hey, man, we uh, I, I want you I want to hear you guys opinions on Gremlins 2. I assume you put this in after our Gremlins 1 coverage and Kit, I got to tell you, and this is something that Kit's been alluding to. This movie was maybe I, I made a joke on threads. What the fuck is Gremlins 2 the new batch? My new favorite movie of all time. <laughs> Because I fucking love this movie unironically. This movie, as if it was like if someone took brought up chat GBT and was like, here are all the things that make Steve Steve and the things that Steve likes. Make a movie about that. And chat GBT was like, okay, we're going to have 
little puppet, gram, puppet gremlins. We're going to have Robert Picardo from Star Trek Voyager. We're going to have <laughs> Christopher Lee from Star Wars. We're going to have fucking Hulk Hogan. We're going to have That's a, true. We're going to have a really big meta joke about movie theaters and movie reels in there somewhere. It's going to be real weird, real silly, self-referential in on the joke. And literally, I think Joe Dante took the because we talked about this in our first uh, uh, gremlins coverage. The best scene of the first Gremlins is that scene when they're all at the bar being just weird. Oh, all the different like um, iterations of Gremlins. Yeah, like, yeah, just being weird little Gremlins and, and Phoebe Cates is there just like, okay, fine, I'll serve you for yeah. some reason. <laughs> She's right. still working. Yeah. That's such an oddball scene, but it's the best one. So it's like Joe Dante was like, I'm going to make a movie. But it's that scene <laughs> for an hour and a half. And then they inject really smart, like dystopian sci-fi tropes about like late stage capitalism in there with how the building is meant to operate and like the company, the, 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 the clamp, which is like also a clear Donald Trump metaphor, the mm. clamp guy. And it, it all works for me. It's so funny. Like I was laughing my ass off by myself when I watched this movie, I immediately called Erica when it was done. I'm like, I think I just watched my favorite movie of all time. Like I literally had, and I'm trying to, to like tell her all the things that I liked about the movie, like the funny scenes. And she's like, this all happened in the same movie. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, Bizarrely, it's yes. wild. So much happens in this. Like seriously, it's a whole new world for me now. Kit move over <laughs> princess Jasmine. You're not the only one on this magic carpet ride. Mm -hmm. All right. And I, I, I probably in a couple weeks, if I'm honest, I'll probably take away half a star to a star on my LBXD review. But I just wanted to live. I just wanted to exist in this Gremlins to post nut clarity <laughs> <laughs> a little longer. Yeah. Uh, so like I'm, I'm just basking in the glory that was this movie. I had such a great time. I can't wait to talk about it with you. Uh, but what did you think about Gremlins 2, the new batch? I mean, Gremlins 2 is a lot of fun. There's no doubt about it. Uh, this was, uh, I think the first one played on TV a lot more as a kid, especially around Christmas time. It's got the whole more of a thematic relevance to the culture. Mm -hmm. uh, but Gremlins 2 is kind of legendary. Isn't it true that Joe Dante didn't really want to do a sequel? And so he yeah. kind of he kind of had this attitude of like, I'll do it, but you're not going to like it. And Yes, yeah, so I, I was doing research and apparently um, Warner Brothers immediately wanted to make a sequel because um, Gremlins was super successful. But in Joe Dante's point of view, like when they wrote Gremlins and directed Gremlins, like the story's done. Mm -hmm. Like there's like there's no way you can make a sequel to this and it be better. But Warner Brothers didn't really understand why this movie was successful, but they wanted him to do it. So he's like, I'm not going to. So he walked away from it. Warner Brothers spent years trying to come up with ideas. Like I, I read at one point, the script had the Gremlins, Gremlins 2 taking place on Mars and Las Vegas and all these random ideas. And then finally, they were like, they went back to Joe Dante like seven years later, because I think the first one's in 84 and this one came mm, out in 90, 90. So six years later, sorry, math. And uh, Joe Dante's like, okay, I'll do it, but I have full creative control. Like, that's what he said. Like, I'm going to have full creative control and I'll do it. And they're like, okay, cool. Cause you made the first one and we love what you made. And that's why like so much of this is off the wall crazy. Cause he was doing whatever the fuck he wanted. And yeah. he just wanted to have fun. And it works. Yeah. It you got the electroshock gremlin. Yeah. The bat gremlin, like all of the different toys from the splice of life that make things extra crazy in this movie. Um, it either works or it doesn't for you. For me, it does work. Yeah. Um, did, did, did Stephen the fifth, write in about why he chose this film? Stephen V did write in. Uh, very brief. Stephen wrote, the movie is insane. Joe Dante didn't want to make it, but after the studio kept pushing him, he finally caved. His only ask was that he'd need full creative control. As a result, the movie is bonkers. I would definitely watch the Key and Peele sketch before you record. Can't wait to listen. Did you... We what? didn't do that. I didn't read that message from him. Do, no. You, do you want me to bring it up? Yeah, cue it. Let's cue it. Five minutes later. We're back. We're sorry, Stephen. We had to take a break uh, to watch the skit. I'd never seen that before. Had you, uh, Steve? No, I have not. That had to be what the actual writing process of this movie was like. I yeah. love Key and Peele so much. Key and Peele is great. If, if, for those of you who haven't seen it, it's literally just the writer's room trying to come up with ideas for Gremlins 2 and uh, uh, Key, or not Key, Michael Key. Um, Jordan Peele walks in and mm -hmm. he's like, 
Well, that's everyone makes their own gremlin and they're all just like, uh, can I have a electric gremlin? And he's like, you talk about a gremlin that becomes a lightning bolt and it zips around in the room. It's in the movie. That's right. And it's, it's you just said noun and gremlin like you're playing Mad Libs <laughs> like it was built for our podcast. It's yeah, it's a very great skit. Go we check to it sit out. 10 feet from Jordan Peele for about 20 minutes one time. I could have touched him. You could have. That would have been illegal. Yeah. Or at least frowned upon. But I thought about it. You should have. I should. I remember when Chartal Copley walked by, you were like, mm. I, I kind of went, mm, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you would have, it would have been his butt. It would have been. At the, where you were sitting. Could you imagine? Chartal Copley's butt? Could you imagine? Many times Chappie's I Chappie's butt? <clears throat> Chappie's got a butt? <laughs> Chappie's got a butt. <laughs> Chappie, chap that ass. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Yeah, it's a wild fucking movie. It should honestly, it's movies like this that for our podcast, like we can take something like The Other Sister and make it Gremlins <laughs> 2 on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but something like Gremlins 2 is, it almost just becomes a normal conversation. You know what I mean? It cancels it out, like how two negatives. Sure. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be a boring episode, is what you're saying. <laughs> It's just my theory. Yeah, just turn it. Uh, yeah, like turn it out. Forrest Gump, you know, the other sister. There is in, in no way can this episode be boring because like in this episode. Saving at, Private Ryan, at, that would be a good convo. Sure. But th <laughs> I argue this would be a good convo because at one point in the recap, at some point, we're going to have to say Christopher Lee is disappointed that he didn't get malaria. And, <laughs> and that one, will be a thing that happened in the movie. It's one of that's early on. <laughs> yeah, it's early on. Well, let's dive into the new batch. And it starts, by the way, the Looney Tunes WB intro was a jump scare for me. Really? They don't do that anymore. No, they don't. And I was like, what is going on right I'm, now? I'm glad they don't. It's a whole lot of dubba, 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 dubba. Do you like Looney Tunes? I am not particularly a Looney Tunes fan. Mm, neither am I. Mm. Mm. I don't know about that. Marvin the Martian? Marvin the Martian. That's a pretty good Marvin Martian. My name is Marvin. Oh. For no reason. Mm, from Marsha. Mm. I'm killing you. Oh, yeah, that's threatening. <laughs> I don't. I can do the voice, but I do not know what he says. Ooh, rabbit. Probably at one point. I will get the bunny. And fuck it. Bad bunny. <laughs> Bad bunny? <laughs> I'm a huge fan. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so the, yeah, I was just kind of thrown off by that because it's very obnoxious. It's a, it's a, they were leaning on that, you know? It went on a long time. Well, fast forward to nowadays, they don't even, like they canceled the Looney Tunes movie that was completely finished and was supposed to be great. Oh, I really want to see the uh, uh, Coyote versus Acme. Yeah, they yeah. scrapped it for a tax cut. I want to see that and so back bad. then it was like their whole fucking brand, you yeah. know? They're like, nah, yeah. now we're just a W and a B. Mm. Actually, we're not even that. We we're, discover. We're Max. Oh, we <laughs> discover. Yeah, I forgot. Fuck discover. <laughs> Uh, and then it opens up with like some rich guys. It's later. It's the, uh, was it Kellerman or some shit? It's the head of security is one of them, but they show Forrester? up. Forrester? Forrester? Sure. Forrester? They You're talking about Robert Picardo's character, right? The the guy who the gremlin loves at the end? Yes. Yeah, that's Forrester. And you say he was in Star Trek? Yeah, he plays the, the doctor in Star Trek Voyager. He's one of the best Trek characters ever because he's just a prickly like, I have no time to take care of you. I'm a very busy hologram. Hmm. Like he's not even a real person. He's just a robotic hologram that oh. appears as a human. How and, does he treat people then? How does he touch them? Because uh, in Star Trek, holograms can touch people. But uh, it's, it's oh, a really? whole thing. Yeah, it's a whole thing. Hold up now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's he, also fun fact. Rewind. Remember when we did Legend, the movie Legend? How could I forget? Remember the part where there's like that swamp witch that attacks Tom Cruise and is like, Wah, wah. yes, that's, that's Robert, Picardo. Robert Picardo. That is Robert Picardo. Yep. Wow. Yeah. The guy, the man has range is what I'm wow. saying. Wow. The man has range. And he fucks a gremlin in this. He <laughs> clearly I just does. want to throw that out there. Yeah. He's in. Yeah. I mean, he's scared at first, but and he does what he likes. <laughs> he's kind of like, eh. He's like, I, I'm into it. I love that they ended it. And we'll get there. What the fuck? <laughs> so the rich guys show up to, to uh, the Asian man shop from the first movie. Mr. Wing. Mr. Wing. They bring a TV <laughs> instead of like a phone or nowadays it would just be like an iPad. You could Zoom call or, you know, FaceTime. Back then they had to like cart a TV and a VHS there. And that was the high how, tech. How are they getting the signal is how I want to know. <laughs> they don't need it. What do you mean? Oh, it was recorded. That's right. Yeah. It's pre-recorded. It wasn't a live Zoom call. You were a just, silly goose. I am a silly goose. <laughs> <laughs> they want to develop on his property, I think. They like build a, a high yeah. rise there. Yeah. So their boss is Daniel Clamp, who's a clear Donald Trump metaphor. Uh, but he wants to create the Clamp Chinatown Center where business gets oriented LOL. Mm. Uh, but Mr. Wing, I guess, is the last holdout in the block, and he's not selling his property. 
What about his uh, grandson? Yeah, what happened to that kid? Uh, apparently, he didn't inherit the shop. No. After lo- losing Gizmo in the first movie, he got taken out of the will. I guess. He's like, you gave Gizmo to those people. I told you not to do that. You are going we to need, hell. We I- needed money, Grandpa. Well, yeah. now guess who's not getting out of mine? Well, you're not getting food. <laughs> <laughs> you need food more than money. <laughs> That's right. And then they're super racist because he he tells them a bit of wisdom. And the one guy's like, was that Confucius or Bruce Lee? Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, he's like, the answer's still no, right? Keep the TV. Gizmo, however, fucks with the TV. He loves it. He's watching Rambo. <laughs> what I don't I don't know if that's First Blood. I think it's First Blood Part Two. Part Two. Part Two. I think it's the 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 zany sequel itself, which would be meta. To survive war, you gotta become war. <laughs> and then they, they go outside, and then they're like, "We'll just wait for him to die. It's no big deal." And then he fucking does. Like yeah. six weeks later, I didn't see that coming. You hear him coughing, and it's like, "Ah, we'll just wait for him." And then smash cut six weeks later. I feel like they poisoned him. They could have because six weeks later they're like developing already. So he he had to die like a week later. Well, they, he might have been in the hospital. And they're like, any moment now, we can just start deconstructing all the the other buildings around him. And as soon as he croaks, and they don't even they, they don't wait. Like no, like no one went in there. And they don't even out. clear out the stuff. No, they don't clear out the stuff. Like, Gizmo's ah, break like, it down. Ah, he's got to run from the crane. I do, uh, the, the Daniel Clamp style. The puppeteering of Gizmo is really impressive. Like all all the puppeteering. Well, there's some actual like effects in this one too. Sometimes, yeah. But I mean, even like his face is so emotive. It's almost creepy yeah. in the way how emotive his face is. I used can to be. want a gizmo so bad. I said that last time we did Gremlins One. You wanted a Furby? He's so cute. He is cute. I never had a dog or anything when I was a kid, so I just wanted a gizmo. I won't get it wet. <laughs> I promise. I won't feed it after midnight. But there could have been some valuables in there. It just seemed really irresponsible. Absolutely. You know? I mean, it just goes to show that like the corporate interests don't care about the cultural interests. That's true. That is so true. But then Lewis and his friend, we later find out as Martin, find something weird. It's gizmo. Uh, we cut to Billy and Kate in the big city. They've got Whoa. big city jobs. Wow. Wow. They moved out of the small town and now in the big city, the Big Apple. I mean, it was pretty close by because that's where they bought Gizmo. Oh, no. Dad was traveling. Yeah. Dad's a traveling uh, inventor slash salesman. Oh, that's yeah. true. That's true. Uh, the revolving door immediately. The clamp Tower has some kind of wild... It's like his dad's invention kind of vibes, you know, right off the bat. It's like a bunch of stuff that doesn't really work. I love this idea. Of, so it's the world's first automated office building where like all of your needs are automated. And, and the way they illustrate this whole building is so it's great satire. Like there's a bit where it's like, oh, your light turned off because you haven't moved around. It thinks you left for the day and turned yeah. off. But the, 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 the turnstile, the revolving door gag got me every time. Because they keep cutting to it where people are like either stuck in there. Or they're working on it. Or they're working on it. Or at the very end when the police try to get in, one police just smashes into it and falls over. And they go to the other revolving door and <laughs> yeah. then finally the regular door. Got me every time. I um, I actually thought it was like an interesting plot twist that Clamp's not really a bad guy. No, he just seemingly is this. Uninvolved just, with his company and. Yeah, he's like in it. He's so removed from the world and this ivory tower of the empire he's made that he really is just he just wants human connection, but it doesn't know what that is or how but, to get well, it. Because like Forrester sucks. Oh, yeah. For, Marla Forrester, sucks. Yeah. yeah. And they've got this whole vibe of pinching pennies and firing people for taking a two minute break. And, you yeah. know, and then you finally meet Clamp and it seems like an act at first. And then eventually he's like actually wants to save the city. I mean, for his own PR a oh, little yeah, he's bit. He's a selfish but, guy, but he's but they depict him as bad. A, he's he's a he's a useful idiot in a way. Yes, yeah. I just thought that was interesting. Which you know, yeah, good parallel. <laughs> <laughs> eh, is he useful to Russia? No. <laughs> ah, <laughs> got him, got him. Ba-dum. Get in the comments. <laughs> but uh, uh, and then ooh, they want to get married, but they're waiting until you know they get their lives a little more squared away, get a little mm-hmm. more money. They're both poor. She's like the tour guide leader, and he's. Some kind of architect, but not a very well paid one. Apparently, wasn't he a banker beforehand? But he would, but he did like drawing comic books, right? He was yeah. a banker, but he was like a teller. It's just a job. Yeah, he wasn't like career bank man. Uh, and then they they attack him for drawing his old town. It's unauthorized art. We need approved genius art like this, and it's just like a square and a dot. It's modern art. I, I love that whole thing. Like, like uh, this company has spent good money for authorized art by actual known artists for employees to enjoy. And it's mm-hmm. just like one of those very abstract, like here's a circle, here's a square. 
And, and then he pulls as potted plant, like, ooh, possible aphid infestation. Nope. Mm -hmm. you, wait, you want to make this look like a flea market? Yeah. What if everybody just decorated their cubicle? You know? No soul, no life in this place. Stopy. And Marla needs a Xanax. She is freaking out, chain smoking cigarettes. You almost got us in trouble. Get your shit together, Billy. Billy, this attitude isn't working for me. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And then we get the uh, unauthorized break. It's the guy from the Burbs. What's his name? He's a very famous actor, but it's the dad from the, the from the evil family. Oh, that's uh, smoking. That's the guy that gets fired for the unauthorized break period. Yeah, um, and, and you didn't you didn't recognize him? No, I, I, the screen was so you know security screen. I didn't yeah. quite pick up what so he was. Fuzzy. I do love the they fire him, and then the one person goes, "We have a career opportunity on level seven. Yeah, <laughs> you got a new new spot open. Uh, and then Kate is giving the clamp tour. Um, we find out that. Uh, Fred, good old Fred, Mr. Dracula got relegated to 3.30 a.m. I love the line because he's done, he's doing this like horror TV show, you know, yeah. uh, we're introducing these classic horror films. They pushed he, him to the 3.30 a.m. slot. I think the actor from the Munsters did something similar where that like in character, he would oh, host really? like, oh, it's spooky Saturday horror movie night. I would if I was him. Yeah. I'd milk that shit for every penny it's worth. And is this guy supposed to be Billy's grandfather? I believe Do they call him Grandpa Fred at one point. I don't remember. I'll be honest with you, man. Yeah. But I like the idea that he's, they're trying to cheer him up about it. And he's like, people that watch TV at three 30 in the morning, ain't scared of the wolf man. <laughs> they're afraid of getting sober and getting a job. Yeah. <laughs> As somebody who watches TV at three 30 a lot. Yes, that's yes. very true. <laughs> uh, and we, then we see fucking beardless Christopher Lee. What? wild jump oh, scare man. i had no recollection of knowing who this man was when he walked in he just wants fresh germs man i, I was cackling like ooh, because his secretary's like oh dr catheter is his name sure Great name uh dr catheter i we've got your uh delivery oh is it my malaria oh it's just rabies <laughs> i already have rabies and the flu is on back order and just the the her, his secretary's like sneezing and he's like, uh, can you give me that? And he just pockets her, <laughs> her tissue that she sneezed in. Great introduction to a super weird character. And the fact that it's Christopher fucking Lee. This is a full oh. decade before he donned the robes of Saruman the Wise and Dooku. Yeah. Wild. I, I, lo I, I love earlier Christopher Lee because he does weird ass shit. This is only two decades after he was killing people. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it wasn't, he was in World War II, wasn't he? Yeah, so it would have been like 40 years. Four decades, yeah. God, what an At old least, man. What an yeah. old bastard. I know. That bastard was old. He was old as fuck. He was old as shit. Because <laughs> he's already like, yo, getting on his years here, and it's 1990. Yeah. When did he die? Oh, I feel like it was like Recently, the early wasn't 2010s, it? I think. No, really? Uh, Christopher Lee, let me look it up. Uh, Yeah, oh, 2015. Yeah, see? Yeah, June 20. He was oh, cooking. Mid-2010s. Cooking another 25 years. Yeah. That, with it, gas. Dude, he was born in 1922. When did Saruman the Wise reason for madness? When he took on a job at Spice O' Life, Inc. <laughs> Spice O' Life. But yeah, it. so the, the dudes that took uh, um, Gizmo our, work at this Lewis place. Lewis. Yeah. Or Martin. <laughs> One of the two. Is Martin and Lewis, are they actual twins? They are actual twins, yeah. That's the, what I thought. These actors are at, you are in, um, I think, Judgment Day, Terminator Two, Judgment Day. Oh, he's the guy that plays the cop. Yeah, that gets or the that the cop uh, stabs in the eye. Maybe I forget what happens to him, but he but they use them as twins. Like the 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 T one thousand mimics him. Yeah, and they use the twin T one thousand. Yeah, ah, ah, ah. Like Gizmo. <laughs> <laughs> Pushing too many pencils, Gizmo. But they got Gizmo and they're like, hey, he really likes dancing. And they turn on a little music and there's this hilarious shot. I where fucking love this scene. Gizmo's doing a little dance. The two twins are like bopping around <laughs> happily. And Christopher Lee's just standing there like annoyed with it all. Yeah. That, they hold it. They hold it a long time. It's and great. If, if you go on your phone right now and you and you get into your messaging app and you go into the gift section to send to someone and you write Gremlins 2, this will be what this shot will be one of them. And it, I let it play. Ever since I watched this movie, I bring it up sometimes and I just like, this is the best. You want to just text it to me and that way you can look at it whenever you want? Yeah, I'll, I'll do it right you know now. I mean? <laughs> I'm so excited to do that. Yeah. He's, what song is it again? Uh, it's like some old 50s rock, right? 60s yeah, it rock. was supposed to be a Billy Idol song. 
but they couldn't afford the rights to it. So they just found a song that had the same beat. And I can't remember what the song was. I didn't write the name Clever. of that song down. Clever girl. Clever We girl. could splice like Billie Eilish into it or something. That would actually be a fun like video to make. Just putting a silly song in there. Yeah. Or like some, some I don't know, Wu-Tang. I'm the bad I'm guy. just Ken. Um, Any hoozle. Yeah, he's he's dancing his little heart out. I love Gizmo. He's cute. Uh, he likes to jam, but he tries to run for it. But uh, Dr. Catheter snatches him up. Don't try to run for me. And uh, then this is where the lights turn off on Billy and his cubicle. And it, it announces that it's to save energy because it thinks that he's left. So he has to move around to turn the lights back on. <laughs> um, and then he hears Bob over there a whistling. And it reminds him of Gizmo. So he asked him where he heard that. And he said, I was in the lab on the 53rd floor or whatever. So he runs to the lab to investigate, tells the front desk lady that he's there to fix the copy machine. She's like, all right. Yeah, whatever. I don't care. She's the one who can't stop coughing. Uh, She probably got sick from the lab, by the way. I think there's a running joke there that doesn't quite land. Uh, And then we get a brief look at the bioelectric rats uh, (laughs) that can turn on light bulbs, but also hurt when you touch them. (laughs) The the thing, the stuff that they're making is so silly and cartoony. I love it. Yeah. Just like. Ah, uh, we, we like, can power the whole city of New York with all the rats. And it's it just because, and they're just like renting out a space in this building. You know what I mean? Like, it's like this self-funded weirdo lab that's renting space in Clamp Tower. It's not even like this billionaire funded. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I told you they would be a bad tenant. Yeah, that's what makes it even funnier. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so they're bioelectric rats. And then uh, he <laughs> he nabs up Gizmo and then they let out the monkeys and I, for some reason, this got me, even though it's not that funny. But it, Alvin, put down that DNA. It just <laughs> yeah, I wrote that down, too. It did make me laugh. Put down that DNA. Uh, Gizmo gets put into the filing cabinet and he tells him to stay put. He'll be as soon as he gets the clock out, he'll take him home. But at this point, Marla comes up, takes her glasses off after. Well, first clamp shows up, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He loves Billy's drawing, yada, yada, yada. He mentions the trees as well, which is they told him to add trees, I think. Yeah. And he's like, oh, get rid of those trees. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, oh. that, by the way, fucking happens at work. Yes. And it is so a, true. It is a fucking nightmare. So true. Like, you got to be okay. Um, I'm so glad I don't work in office just, settings anymore. I'm, that just shit. Gonna, I'm just dying a little inside. Thank you for that <laughs> feedback. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then he Gizmo keeps like popping open the filing cabinet and he says, that, oh, the drawers are automatic in case I need something. And yeah. Clamp's like, hmm. huh, wouldn't you? That's great. What a silly idea. One small thing I don't want to pass over is uh, Gizmo has a black armband in memory of Mr. Wing. Yeah. <laughs> it just it cracks me up because that was a thing people used to do is make a black art, wear a black armband in memory of somebody. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't even remember that. I just it's accepted so that Gizmo that, was doing that. I had forgotten all about that that was a thing. So when like, is, what's this little black armband, buddy? Oh, is that because your buddy died? <laughs> fucking great. Yes, Mr. Wayne. Hysterical. Uh, but at this point, because Marla is into the fact that he might be promoted mm-hmm. because Clamp seems to like Billy so much, she takes off her glasses. Classic 80s and 90s movie for it's time to be sexy because glasses can't be sexy. No, you can't fucking glasses. And I got to say, Marla's a fox. <laughs> you into it? I am. When she lets her hair down? <laughs> yes. Man. And I'd like to smoke cigarettes with her all night. You want to climb that corporate ladder with her? <laughs> sure. <laughs> but she's she comes on too strong. Plus, he's got Phoebe Cates. Also, you know? her, her whole thing is like she wants to take him out to dinner uh, in this career advancement window. And uh, she's like, I know this chic restaurant downtown. It's Canadian. <laughs> The they can, clean the fish right at your table. They got chocolate, a literal chocolate mousse. Yeah. <laughs> they clean the fish right at your table. That sounds lovely. And he, why doesn't he just turn her down? He's got a fiance. He's got a fucking alien in his cabinet that yeah. is super dangerous and will kill people if it gets out. Well, how else will, the, will, will Gizmo get wet and have a plot? I know <laughs> it's just a silly movie, but the fact that he just left Gizmo in the filing cabinet. Mm hmm drove me nuts it is after what happened last time it's mad billy's dumb because they also play it like billy's oblivious to the fact that marlo's like hitting on him yeah oh okay we'll just go to a meeting it'll be fine and then she gives him a foot job and he's like oh that's not part of the itinerary damn it i had no idea i do love the because i I, actually watching this movie does kate ever call him out for having lipstick on his cheek 
Uh, she says something like, if we survive tonight, you're going to be in real big that's trouble. That's it though, right? Yeah, that's it. Oh man. Yeah. Cause I think when she meets up with Marla, Marla's like, listen doll, I don't, I, I tried it. I, I tried it. I was going to suck his soul out. But, uh, <laughs> just Like a golf ball through a garden. Just hose. on the off chance that he had a dollar someday. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I, he wasn't having it. But watching this movie, I'm all, I actually am reminded of American Psycho pretty often. Yeah. Because of, of course it's the eighties, it's New York. Let's go to a weird themed restaurant that everyone has to go to. And I just love that they kind of play with that idea and make it like a Canadian themed restaurant. It's so funny. Want some horn? Yeah. Um, I love the, the waiters are dressed as Mounties. <laughs> <laughs> you honestly would love that restaurant. I would. Yeah. I would love like, it so bad. Let's go there again. Eh? Yeah. The Mountie um, always gets his man. That's right. <laughs> This episode of Streaming Things is sponsored by BetterHelp. What's the first thing you'd do if you had an extra hour in your day? Sleep. You would sleep more. More, yeah. Okay, sleep that's more. fair. Some people might go for a run, read an extra book. A lot of us spend our whole lives wishing we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. That's what therapy can do. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so that you can do more of it. You can learn positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. You can get empowered to be the best version of yourself. You can also nap. You can also just nap. And so if you're thinking about starting therapy, if you've never tried it, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash streaming things today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash streaming things. Spring is just around the corner, ladies and gentlemen. So how about we spring into action and give a special shout out to all of the patrons who keep the lights on over here at Streaming Things. And I want to give a special shout out to our super patrons for the month of March. Thank you. Stanton Valentino, Maddlestat, Bryce Coppin, Susie Callahan, Anthony Corona, Sunshine, Huckleberry Cauliflower, Ashley Hazen, Mike from New Hampshire, Brett X, Emily Scarano, Lil Tickler, Sven. Seven, Jay Scramo, Bluff Pum, AK Ashley Ray, Adam Busby, Wendy O'Laughlin, Jason Hawkins, Big Butthorn, Conrad, Kaylee Sampson, Rabbit Dog in a Barbie Car, Charlie Friday, Alexis Adler, Peaches, Emmy, Haley B, Joe Velez, John Collins, Amanda King, Trisha Bueller, Sun Loving Mortal, Suzanne Road, Jen Robinson, Kalisha Reeves, Aaron Armstrong, Kevin Strother, Ashley Powers, Stephen V, Casey McCain, and Enza. Thank you all so much for supporting Streaming Things, and let's get back to the show. Uh, but Gizmo immediately busts out, climbs down a rope of paper clips, which that was cute. It's adorable. Yeah. And Billy tells Kate that he's got a meeting uh, and he wants her to get Gizmo. And she doesn't even like Gizmo. What the fuck? Like, you know, she, yeah, she doesn't really know. She's Gizmo. not having that. She's yeah. not having a relationship with him. She just knows what happened. Yeah. And honestly, it's very unfair of Billy to put her in this position. Mm -hmm. I think so. I was upset for Phoebe Cates. Yeah. Uh, but she does remember the rules. She's like, don't get him wet. Don't feed him after midnight. And the third one. Mm -hmm. whatever that is. Uh, sunlight will kill them. Sunlight will kill them. That's yeah. the important one when you're fighting them. Uh, and then very quickly, she pulls, well, while she's being told all that, Gizmo's wandering around having a good old cute time. Yeah. And the janitor finds a faulty water, water fountain. And there is, I like this, this set piece a lot because it's like him trying to hide from the water and then they get shooting farther and farther and your expectations mounting it ends up landing on like the easel and then dripping on his Drips head. On him, yeah. <laughs> he ends up waking out like boss Nass and little fur balls shooting everywhere. Me so wet. Yeah. And then we get, are, are you supposed to believe that the, the, some of the gremlins that come out, especially Mohawk boy, spike or whatever, like, is uh, it the same one? Like, they seem to be angry at Gizmo. Like, they're back. They're not, they're not the same ones, no. They are okay. different. Um, the, Spike is the bad one in the first movie. The This one that looks like Spike is actually called Mohawk. And then the other three, there's Lenny and George. Those are the smart and dumb ones. And then the the wacky one with the weird eyeballs is called like Daffy. Of Mice and Men? Yeah. Lenny and George? Yeah, it's a Mice and Men joke. But yeah, and then the, the weird with the one with weird eyes is called Daffy. 
as like a Daffy Duck. Like Duck. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so they they kind of push him in the ventilation shaft, but it looked like there was some like a, you fucking bastard, we're back kind of vibes to that. Mm -hmm. um, well, I th I, and, and I wonder like, it, why is it that anytime that a mogwai gets water on them and they procreate, or uh, do you call that procreation? I don't know. They replicate. duplicate, replicate. Why are they always automatically bad? Like, why aren't they just like more cute little adorable gizmos? That'd be so cool. Like, I, I, I understand like if you eat, they're evil because they're evil gross gremlin creatures now. Yeah, but they're like nefarious that want to eat because they want to be that form. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I think gizmo is honestly just one of a kind. He's just a G. He's the only nice That's what one. Call him gizmo. Yeah, like the G in Mogwai is capital. <laughs> uh, or the G in gizmo. Jesus Christ. <laughs> It was right there. And you went with Mongwai. The one with the G in the middle. <laughs> yeah. I'm proud of you. That's why I got a podcast. <laughs> yes. Not a real job. Um, they go to the Canadian restaurant. Um, and then, yeah, she hits him with the foot job after he declines the chocolate mousse. And she gives him a kiss on his cheek, which leaves a big old right, bright red thing of lipstick there. Mm-hmm. Kate, meanwhile, grabs had, had grabbed the wrong gizmo. It's um, Daffy. You, Daffy. His goofy ass. Ooh, 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 ooh. The practical effect with the eyes rolling around constantly is yeah. such a goofball move. I called him Goofy Gizmo. <laughs> that makes sense. And then uh, Billy comes home late with the lipstick on his face, and she's been dealing with this motherfucker for a while. Oh, I'd be pissed. Dude, pissed. she takes it so easy on him. What yeah. a sweetheart. Billy, he's you don't lucky, deserve her. He's lucky that they're dealing with a literal like tiny crackhead in their house and the Futtermen show up because yeah. he would have gotten harimed. Yeah, but rightfully so. Not in front of guests, though. No. Nope, nope, nope. So they bag up the beast and then the Futtermen show up. They're there to visit. He's been in like in therapy and shit ever since <laughs> the events of the first film. Because he was the super xenophobic dude that like... He's been right, the, though. Gremlins are real. The tractor, like, crushed through. Yeah. Because he was like, all oh, the gremlins in your car. Didn't we talk about in the episode if they died? Yeah, we were wondering if they died or not. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we didn't remember the sequel. Well, you hadn't seen it. I hadn't, yeah. I'm being a dumb dumb. So they're, uh, we cut back to the other gremlins. They're fucking wheezing the juice in the ice cream shop. <laughs> well, yeah. Remember that? Wheezing the juice. Wheezing the juice. They're yeah. my spirit animals. Billy wants to shut off the water to the whole building. Very smart. Very smart. So he's but he's turning the valve to the left. Just going to point out that that's lefty Lucy. You're yeah. turning more water on well, heavier flow. Billy's an idiot. He's not a handy man. <laughs> yeah. He's that's not the, true. He's not the brightest. He didn't even know Marla wanted to bang. Yeah. He's just clueless. I still don't know if he truly knows that she wants to bang <laughs> to this day. <laughs> to this he's day. Like, she accidentally took her shoe off and played with my dick with her foot. It's weird. I didn't want to embarrass her. So I left. Yeah. <laughs> I was just trying to be a nice guy. <laughs> I mean, um, I was in the Canadian theme restaurant. I had to be a nice guy. That's true. Sorry. And I left. Sorry about the dick, eh? <laughs> um, and then that security guy shows up. I've, I, I recognize him from so many things. For sure. He was the limo driver friend in blank check. Uh, oh, the, which is um, a deep cut. The the security guard? Yeah, the security guard that shows up and it bites him on the nose. Rick Ducommon. Coming, he's in Spaceballs, Dick of Moon, The Burbs, <laughs> Scary <laughs> Movie. He's Cindy's dad in oh, Scary Oh, he's in The movie. Burbs. Yeah, he's a uh, he's the neighbor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, he's the neighbor. He's art. Yeah. He's, did you, I bet Joe Tante directed The Burbs, and I'm we're both fucking idiot. He, yeah, I think he, he did. did. Yeah, he yeah. Did. He we're totally dumb did. as shit. <laughs> God, <laughs> take us off the pod. <laughs> Just nothing but Madison and Erica from now on out. Yeah, seriously. Not even Andy. That's why there's so many. <laughs> no, no, no. That's why there's so many Burbs actors, buddy. Because it's Joe Dante. Yeah, Joe Dante. He's getting his friend's work. Any hoosie. Rick uh, Dickamon is uh, the, gets his nose bitten. <laughs> I, I wrote my notes. And oh, I think it would have fit the vibe of this movie. So when the gremlin shoot, like bites him, I wrote my notes. I, re I really wish he would have shot it. <laughs> like, the just, gremlin? Like, ah, poof, and just like, killed it. Yeah, for sure. Like, I would have left. Or Billy. Or Billy. Just shot him in the face. Oops. And then took Phoebe Cates and gave her a good life and treated her right. Yeah. Like, I won't cheat on you with her. <laughs> You're yeah. an awesome partner, Phoebe Cates. Just saying. Uh, and then at this point, uh, Kate meets his hot boss. And there's like that little, it's just my, it's my boss. And that's when she's like, you're going to be in big trouble if we survive this. Oh, because he gets arrested and they yeah. like hatch overnight and she bails him out. And yeah, he comes back like the next day. But mm -hmm. uh, he tries to tell the security boss, uh, Forrester, about the gremlins. 
I love the bit where they walk by the TV station and it says the archery channel and Robin Hood walks out shaking his head. <laughs> so yes. fucking silly. Some dumb jokes like that. It's great. And then the uh, cooking show lady that cooks with microwaves is her thing. Uh, mm. Oh yeah. Microwave with Marge. Whenever you're making a bologna and bean dip roll up. All the food she talks about sounds disgusting. You never had a bologna and bean dip roll up? No. Man, I've had like either. a bolo- or a salami and cream cheese roll up. Me neither, buddy. Me neither. But then one of the... Uh, one of the gremlins bursts out of the console in the control room. Oh, I love this scene because the, he's trying to tell Forrester and the security people like about the monsters and he's explaining to them the rules. And they're all laughing and they're kind of being audience. It's very meta because he's like the, the audience of gremlins would be like, well, what if they're on a plane and they flew through a yes. different time zone? And I like, would never thought about any of that, but that's very what true. What if they eat food and they got something stuck in their teeth and then that thing, they swallow that like after midnight. Are I don't they know, still man. Monsters? I didn't make the fucking rules. <laughs> It's true, though. Those are questions that need to be asked. But then the one just rips out of the computer and just bites a guy. It's it's true. It's always midnight somewhere. That that puppet of Mohawk, I gotta say, that gremlin, Mm -hmm. it's fucking rad. That thing's cool looking. It's very metal, Yeah, I think is what you would say. But uh, Um, Microwave with Marge is making tuna noodle cheese product surprise. Why wouldn't you? (laughs) Cheese product. Marge is a boozer. Can we talk about that? Oh, yeah. She's putting a little sherry in there. I always use a little extra and she's always taking sips of it before she <laughs> pours it in. And then she's got a full on bottle of liquor at one point, just chugging it and pouring some in. Yeah. Go Marge. Get Marge it. and in charge. Uh, they fucking hate microwaves. I love that callback to the first movie, too. I mean, that's what I mean about these memories that they somehow have, because it's like they bust out. They, they fuck with Marge a little bit. They see the microwave and they get super angry and start trying to blow it up because one of them died in a microwave. Yeah. The first one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, oh, I didn't pick up that that was like a memory thing. I thought they were like purposely trying to cause a short to make the sprinklers go off, but I don't know if they would even know that that's an option for them to do. The brainy one would. Um, that's true, but he's not there yet. Maybe, but I, yeah, I, I really, I think it's just like a elbow in the ribs for the audience. Oh but yeah, for sure. Like not nothing, member. Yeah, nothing to think about. As member far microwave as in universe, but they blow up the microwave and then cause the sprinklers to go off. Which I was looking at all this really expensive multi camera. Uh, those cameras lights. too, yeah. man. That's what I was thinking about. Like those are like hundred grand a piece. I love that we got to see how gremlins multiply because in the first one, they a spike fell in the pool and the pool just kind of bubbles up and there's fog and lights coming out of the pool, but you don't actually see how they multiply. So in this one, they still have like the little balls come out of their back, but they you get their like see through the like, skin and you can yeah, see like the, the embryo of the new uh, gremlin and yeah. they just come out fully like, eh, wow. man, my gremlin. Uh, I want to play <laughs> poker and <laughs> Not kill really anybody, but fuck shit up is what mm. I do. Yeah. Yeah. They're kind of cool. They just like to fucking party. I had friends like these gremlins. <laughs> you know what I mean? They you just fuck everything up. They break your microwave. They're, they're, they're always trying to kiss you, mm-hmm. <laughs> but they're kind of harmless. They'll bite you. Yeah. You don't want to hang out with them too long. But no. It can be a just, good time. Yeah. Every, every once in a blue moon you, on a Saturday. Yeah. What's up fuckers? You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Let's get weird. Um, I was a gremlin. What am I talking about? I was that friend. Um, Which of these gremlins are you like? The most? Yeah. Not the brainy one. Probably uh, Daffy. Daffy. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> um, or the one that's with Forrester on top. You know, the lady one. The lady one. Yeah. 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 yeah I could see you. Uh, if somehow uh, Greta gremlin and uh, uh, Daffy got mixed up, it would be you. Ooh. Is that her name, Greta? I think it's Greta Gremlin. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So then in the control room, they realize that there's a, the pest infestation uh, monitor is off the charts. Well, maybe they're rats. I don't think so. Whatever they are, they're going to respect the chain of command. <laughs> I love it. And she looks at him like, <laughs> like what fucking fuck? what? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Like the people say the weirdest shit in this movie, but the movie like has a character that typically is like, what? <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. great. It's totally spot on. Yeah. Um, and then we're, they're in the elevator. The girl ones are. And when the fire alarm goes off, dude, dude, the fire alarm kills me. Fire man's a mortal enemy. <laughs> <laughs> Please exit. Oh uh, my God. The, yeah. I love it. I was thinking about you when I heard that, when I saw that scene, it was money, baby. They're on the elevator. Um, clamp. It cuts the clamp. He's just in his office. Just bored. And I love that about like the super wealthy man that's finally checking on one of his businesses. And he's like, do do, what should I do? Uh, I'll send some memos. I love when he's like, "Uh, did you 
the shred the other documents? Yeah. Do we have any more to shred? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. Uh, and then he, one of the gremlins puts a mouse trap in her sandwich and you, she's just gone. Yeah. We can assume maybe she's dead. Maybe she's dead. Maybe she got her finger smashed and she ran in fear. I feel like it was her tongue or something. Ooh, Cause they put it in been. the sandwich. Yeah. yeah. Could have been. Um, but yeah, when he comes out, <laughs> the gremlin is dressed as his secretary, just typing away <laughs> and that old word. I don't even think that's a computer, right? That's like a word processor or whatever. Oh, I didn't look at it to be honest. It's just such a tiny monitor. It had yeah. to be. But uh, yeah, it attacks Clamp, hurts him, bites his hand. He ends up shredding the fucking gremlin into like green goop. Not my tie. No. Nah. And Billy and Forrester show up uh, and they're like, what the hell's going on? Right. So they're going to take care of the infestation. We cut yeah, to Billy's like, they came from, I came from the laboratory and Clamp's like, I was never a fan of the laboratory tenant. We could have had three shrinks and a plastic surgeon in there. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Uh, but no, poor Kate is on the elevator and she's being beset on all sides by gremlins. One of them is like drilling through the wall of the elevator somehow. Yeah. Uh, then when all the arms come out and are like reaching for yeah. it, it's just creepy. Yeah, poor Kate. She didn't deserve this. And then, but luckily they're dumb and they're like making the elevator go down, go down, go down, go down, go and down. smash themselves in the elevator shaft, which would have killed her, but it's oh, fine. Definitely would have killed her. I assume my head cannon is she was she was protected by the sheer amount of gremlin bodies mm. took a lot of the brunt. That's I just, true. I love like all the green goo that just erupts from the floor when it lands. And then the lady in the hall, we'll just get the next one because this uh, one doesn't you? work, bitch. Well, you uh, clamp says no, no press, no cops, no nothing. We'll handle the bugs. Um, and did, then did, did you like the Leonard Malton cameo? Which one was that? Leonard Malton's the film reviewer who was reviewing the yes. first gremlins movie. Yes. <laughs> I like the, uh, the, the, they're beating the shit out of the critic. Well, apparently, so I was re I didn't, I couldn't find his original review. To be honest, I didn't look that hard. Was he a real critic who panned oh, it? Oh, Leonard Malton. Yeah. Leonard Malton took the place of, uh, Gene Siskel on Siskel and Ebert when Siskel died. Okay. So like, he's like a big movie critic and apparently he panned the first gremlins and what he's saying is like from his actual review. And some of the gremlins like start attacking him. I was like, Oh, it's a 10. It's a 10. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was just a actor. They hired to be a critic stand in. No, that's actual Leonard Malton. Wow. Yeah. He was like, fuck it. I'll take the money. Sure. Well, get that bag, Leonard. <laughs> uh, we cut to Martin and Lewis and the, and the dweeb who are in the lab. Still, they see the gremlin and he's, Showing them his new vegetable medley serum and then yeah. the gremlin drinks it and becomes a vegetable gremlin, as alluded to by Jordan Peele in the skit. Uh, and the other one drinks uh, the brain hormone and becomes yeah. the genius. What is it, Lenny? Oh, no. So Lenny and uh, George are completely different characters than the brain gremlin. Mm. Yeah. So we get the. This the, is just called the brain gremlin. Yeah, we get the brainiac gremlin. The genius gremlin is what I called it because I'm smarter. Yeah, you are. Yeah. And then the others get wings. Um, and then <laughs> the smart gremlin gives him genetic sunblock so that he can fly in the daytime. Yeah. Very briefly wreak havoc on the city. And I love how the brain gremlin is voiced by Tony Randall. Like It sounds so... I love it so much. It's, yeah. It's just, oh, hello, chap. I'm just a normal man of the genus formus. I will. It's, it's so fun. We're just normal men. Innocent men. Uh, and this is, I burst love, through the wall and it makes the Batman symbol. I lost it. Great. And then Christopher Lee has an amazing uh, line where he's like, this is a catastrophe. Uh, all they have to do is eat three or four children and it'll be appalling <laughs> controversy. That's right. <laughs> three or four children. And if they eat three or four children. Two, no big deal. Three? No, one, no one cares. Two, eh. Three or four children though. All over the news. Mm -hmm. And there's chaos all throughout the building. Uh, we get the return of the flasher. Yeah. And, and Phoebe Cage just kicks him. She's yeah. sick of that shit. Yeah. Stop showing me your he, dick. He flashed her in the first one, right? Yeah. And then we find out why she hates the flasher later on in the movie. Well, she speaks for all women in that moment where well, she's yeah. just over this. Oh, yeah. Stop sure. it. I don't want to see your wing. Yeah. But she has a, <laughs> she has another backstory moment later on in the movie. I that, don't recall it. Oh, we'll get to you. it. We'll get to it. It's hilarious. Yeah. And this is where we get the fire alarm. I'm so sorry for jumping the gun earlier. Uh, my notes for this are ha 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 ha. <laughs> I fucking love that fire alarm. Fire. We cut to the Futterman's out at the cathedral, which he doesn't appreciate very much. He's not into the old style buildings, uh, but he runs into the bat gremlin and he's actually vindicated by this. He's like, I'm not crazy. This shit's crazy. <laughs> They're real. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he like dunks it into concrete and it flies away and becomes a gargoyle. <laughs> 
just solidifies immediately into the gargoyle. This movie's fucking insane. I love it. Uh, we cut back and uh, Dr. Catheter is freaking out. The this, horror. Gremlins are breaking the fourth wall in the theater in this next scene. The whole movie stops for a second because they've gotten the reel and they're like doing like little uh, bunny rabbit. On the- <laughs> Dude, this got me. When I was watching, because you the, thought your TV was messing up, the film up? starts messing up a bit, and I was like, "What? What's going oh, on?" Oh, you thought your film was messing up? Yeah. Well, but, well, obviously, <laughs> when the when the film does like the the burned film effect, yeah. I was like, "Oh, this is a this is a trick." But it kind of warbles a little bit before yeah, that. That's true. And and then like, as someone who who worked in a movie theater, this cracked me up because, like you said, they the gremlins are like, "Yeah." It's supposed to be if you're watching this in a movie theater for the first time, you would think there are gremlins in the theater yeah. fucking with the projector. And it's such a genius little meta joke to throw in. And eventually the, the one's like, nudie, nudie, nudie. And they like, they put, <laughs> put on a like a, a porno, yeah. <laughs> which prompts a woman and her daughter to go out. Again, this is still outside of the movie. Yeah. She goes to a movie theater manager who's like over it. And she's like, I can't believe you would show that type of stuff. He's like, madam, we only play the movies. We don't make them. Did you have to use that line a bunch? All the fucking <laughs> time, dude. And, and then, and then the project is like, oh, they're they're going crazy. You got to get them to stop them. So the the manager's like, I'll take care of this. What does he do? Does he go to the projector room? No, he goes back into the auditorium and gets Hulk. Hogan. I mean, you've got him in residence. Fucking Hulk Hogan. And then Hulk Hogan cuts a wrestling promo on Gre- Do you think the Gremsters have what it takes <laughs> to take down the Hulkster dude? <laughs> I could not believe my fucking eyes. I was dying. Uh, but apparently that when this movie came out on VHS, they had different versions of this gag where I think there was a bit uh, here. I wrote it down. There was a version where um, they did something with John Wayne even though John Wayne had passed away by this point, they used like a John Wayne movie and they had someone over like overdub him to pretend like, Hey, what are you doing? Gremlin. (laughs) (laughs) Sure. Yeah. uh, But there was like another version, but apparently like if, if you watch this on VHS, it was different than what we saw this. We saw the theater version, which oh. I, I love this. It's fucking Hulk. I, love, I bet they made one that like fit more in line with it being a video. Right. Exactly. Know? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, nudie, nudie. <laughs> She's like this woman running through a garden with her top off. <laughs> nudie, nudie. Oh, but apparently the, the whole thing with the woman complaining to the theater manager was actually something that happened to Joe Dante. He was in a movie theater and a woman came up to her to him with her daughter and was complaining to him about how Gremlins was too adult for her daughter. But the daughter really wanted to go back in the theater and keep watching it and actually ran away from the mom and hid in the theater. And they had to go find the daughter who really wanted to keep watching Gremlins. He probably was like, this is amazing. Yeah. I know who my audience is. Yep. Yeah. So old Fred, I I forgot to mention the guy on the tour earlier that was in Kate's tour that wouldn't stop taking photos. All the really stereotypical uh, Japanese tourists that loves cameras, cameras. Yep. And then old, but he's, he comes in and it's very shortly, but old Fred's in the control room and I've my, my note. Cause he wants to be like, I'm going to document this. Fuck it. But he find my note is he finds the camera loving his motherfucker who ever lived. Yes. I am a camera. I am a camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, Great line. We see sexy gremlin who is Greta gremlin. I think Greta gremlin. Yeah. Briefly. Uh, the more chaos is unfolding in the splice of life. One of the guys takes that, uh, I forget, uh, like liquid electricity or whatever they called it, uh, bio, bioelectric mm-hmm. juice and drinks it and becomes the electric gremlin. What the other, another one's got, is it spike or a uh, uh, Mohawk that has an Uzi? I think, uh, one of them does. Oh yeah. Cause they're trying to get into the weapons cabinet that Christopher Lee has, but yeah. Mohawk already has, has them. Yep. And he starts opening fire on Billy. Um, the, cl- ele- the electric one zaps and kills Christopher Lee mm-hmm. gone too soon. RIP. RIP. Clamp sees Fred broadcasting and, and he's so confused. A, he doesn't want the press to know, but then B, he's like, Dracula? Because <laughs> <laughs> he has no context. He's so dumb. Yeah, well, that and he's like, I get it. It's like, what? Dracula? Uh, but yeah, Gizmo, meanwhile, is having a, a training montage. She's working out. To be war. Rambo and mixed with Rocky style. You got to become war. <laughs> Um, and they think that Murray is crazy as shit outside because he's trying to get in the building to help. Now oh, there's gremlins in there. You gotta, you gotta let me in there. But he's like, no, I'm not crazy. God damn it. Um, Spike or Mohawks, Jesus, drinks the spider juice, becomes the spider gremlin. Mm-hmm. Creepy. The boss. 
they trap the electric gremlin in the phone. <laughs> yeah. And all the and way he, up in Clamp's office. And I love how he's trapped in the phone, but it's got that waiting music. because they put him on hold. That's how they trapped him. And he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, I love the bit where he's like, or, all right, it's time to play the tape. I thought I thought I would never have to because he gives up completely. And it's the, the Clamp News Network's end of civilization. But more importantly, we hope you enjoyed life. <laughs> Apparently, this was a real thing that CNN had. What? Yeah, an end like of civilization C- tape? CNN had an end of civilization tape that would only be played if it was confirmed that civilization was going to end. <laughs> and so they made a joke because that's such an absurd thing right, to have. Who cares so they were the like, TV well, at this point. we're definitely making that a joke. <laughs> and and Clamp is like tearing Yeah, up. he's like saluting it and crying. <laughs> Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. And this at this point, Billy gets the idea to fool the gremlins into thinking the sun has gone down. Uh, by fast forwarding the clocks uh, uh, by three hours, which will be in there t- in real time will be 420 when they're supposed to drop the ball. I don't know if that's a weed joke or if that had not developed yet. I, I hope pre- it is. I appreciated it regardless. Um, and oh, developer save city. I love it. Love it. So I, I finally get to use my secret exit. <laughs> that um, Everyone sees him immediately, <laughs> even though he's never been in that building before. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Wait, what? Clamp's never been there before. What do you mean? Never been where? At at his own tower. He's at the top of the tower. But the first time he, I mean, today, yes. But the first time he shows up, he's like, guys, I'm going to start being around a lot more. And what's what's that cabinet? And who are you? Like, he's he's clearly like never there. Okay. okay. But he's got this secret exit that he's been dying to use. Hey, the building's been built for a while. I saw it on the plans and I've been dying to use it. Yeah. Mm, I want this. Yeah. So he exits to the street. I just uh, love how the, the 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 news people immediately see him, <laughs> Mr. Clamp. <laughs> like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Marla runs into the web, uh, uh, Mohawk's web downstairs, and just gets kind of stuck there. Uh, Gizmo's still doing his training montage, and uh, Gizmo becomes full Rambo, puts the headband on. It's time to fucking go. Meanwhile, the Gremlins are having like a full on cocktail party at this point, having a great time. Uh, and Fred is interviewing the one that can talk. The genius one. Genius gremlin. We won't want anyone else desires. We just want civilization. Now look at this little guy here. And then he just like shoots. <laughs> now was that civilized? No. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly not. That guy can hang out. Uh, and then clamps outside covering the windows to 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 pull the ruse off. Uh, meanwhile, Billy has been tied up. I called him Goober. Is that uh, Daffy? That is Daffy. The, you're talking about the dental chair scene? Yeah. Yeah, that's he's, Daffy. He's been tied up by him. <clears throat> Kate runs into Marla, who's caught in the web. That's when Marla comes clean. Like, I was trying to fuck your boyfriend. It's not a big deal. Let me out. <laughs> it's not a big deal. And then Kate's like, that's fair. He is hot and cuts her out. Girl power. And uh, that's when the spider gremlin shows up. I don't know if how in the 80s and 90s, if there was ever anything spider related, they used that same sound effect. That, that it sounds like cicadas. Because it was like, creepy. That's, that's the spider noise. Yeah. yeah. Arachnophobia. I have to go back and check. <laughs> but I bet it's got it. it. Probably does at some point. And then Gizmo fires his burning Rambo arrow, which is a pencil. Yeah. <laughs> it sets the whole. What happened to him? I guess he finally had enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we get time to stop for an amazing musical number. Oh, oh, I'm not letting you skip this joke. Okay. Cause uh, that they're all like, oh, what are we gonna do? There's so many gremlins, and uh, Murray's like, did Washington give up? No. Did Lincoln give up? No. And Phoebe Cates goes, don't even talk to me about Lincoln. Something terrible happened to me in my childhood the day before Lincoln's birthday. You see, I was in a park, and a man in a raincoat came up to me, and they're like, okay, Phoebe, we don't have time for that because it's making fun of the whole like <laughs> my dad got stuck in the chimney at Santa Claus. Oh, dark yeah. backstory, <laughs> dude. That was insane. <laughs> what the- <laughs> That's one of the most insane things ever put to celluloid. Yeah. And I love how they start going down that path that she has a traumatic memory about Abe Lincoln's Don't birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even get me started about Lincoln. But that's why she hates the flashy guy. Because mm. uh, apparently someone flashed assaulted. her the day before Abe Lincoln's birthday. Dang. Four score and seven years ago. Somehow I missed all of that. Really? Yeah. I As soon as she did the dramatic, 
turn away from everybody, but towards the camera yeah. and sort of, I have a terrible memory about Abraham Lincoln's birthday. I was <laughs> cackling like, oh my God, they're doing it. They're making fun of that scene. They're self-aware of the chimney yes, scene. Yes. But then we get a fantastic musical number. The gremlins do a great yes. job. Why mm -hmm. doesn't, I didn't catch why the whole pull the shades off thing doesn't work for the sunlight. What happens to Clamp's plan? Oh, yeah, because it gets overcast and starts storming outside. Oh, no. And so, like, there's no sunlight. Mm. Yeah. So then d they decide to electrocute them. But so he tells Murray to spray them all, which is a ballsy move because they're all replicating like crazy. I mean, there'll be thousands of them if mm -hmm. this plan doesn't work. And then luckily, Kate does, in fact, know how to transfer a call that's on hold in the boss's office upstairs to the lobby. Mm -hmm. It'd be funny if she didn't because she's like, I'm pretty sure I can. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, oh, actually I, can't. I don't know. Yeah. This isn't even a phone. She pulls a Palpatine. I don't actually know how to do that, but I'm, together we can learn. I'm too weak. <laughs> I'm a different Palpatine I'm, I'm thing. Too weak. Weak. <laughs> uh, so he electrocutes all of them into a giant goo puddle. At that point, <laughs> I love the one. It's clearly the Wicked Witch because it's got like a little yeah. witch hat. I'm melting. <laughs> Clamp charges in with the cavalry. Through, <laughs> tries the first two revolving doors and then ends up coming through the open door. Then he do slips you, in the goo. I do have one question. Do you think the, is the electric one still alive? Uh, no. Like what would happen to the electric one? He just did, would dissolve. Okay. You know, he had nowhere to go. Okay. Hmm. I don't know. Only one that's alive is the sexy one. Hmm. <laughs> mm. Fred. Gets made an anchor. It's a good ending for him. He gets his job back better than ever. Think avuncular. And then he decides to promote Billy. He wants to pay him for his design, probably an exorbitant amount of money to design his old hometown, essentially. <laughs> um, I love this. It's just our hometown. The traditional community. It's clamp corners where life slows down to a crawl. You make a place for things, things come. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> We're going to build the biggest, most sens sensational, quiet little town. I love the moment where one of his flunkies shoots his shotgun at the floor. <laughs> what the fuck is that? It, it moved. It moved. <laughs> oh, okay. sir. Okay, carry on. <laughs> um, I just realized that his, uh, at the end of this movie, that the logo outside the statue is, is a, clamp. a clamp of the world. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a it's honestly a really good design. Like yeah. his clamp logo. Yeah. Clamp in the world. You want me to it's clamp them, boss? But let me clamp them. Mm. But yeah, so we then after all this happy ending stuff, it cuts to the office upstairs and Forrester is still stuck because he calls down for help. And he's like, we'll, we'll be up there whenever we can, man. The elevators are shut down and he's up there. Why don't you take the day off? Actually, take half a day off. He's been getting, <laughs> he's been fucking the gremlin, I guess. He's got kisses all over because now the gremlin wants to get married. Cause she's, yeah, she's in a wedding dress. She's making kissy faces. And then Robert or Robert Picardo is just kind of looking at, at her in fear, but then it's like, you know, it ends with him being like, I, I might not hate it. Yeah. I mean, this I mean might, it's going to be a while before anyone gets up here. <laughs> this might be awesome. This could be our little secret. <laughs> Bonkers way to end a wild movie. And that's the end. Holy shit. Stephen the fifth. Thank you so much for suggesting this. I, Maybe it's a movie that Steve's love. God, I've adored this so yeah. much. I had such a fun time this with it. This is like it. the happiest you've been ever on the I show. I literally called like Erica the night of and like had an hour long discussion. Like, this movie's so fun. I went to work the next day. Y'all seen Gremlins 2, the new batch from 1990? <laughs> they're like, yes. <laughs> Wasn't it great? And they're like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody shared your enthusiasm. Like high five and everybody in the yeah, office. Right. The electric one? Dude. Hulk shows up. <laughs> and then there's one that's a vegetable gremlin. And then it appears in the salad bar later towards the movie. <laughs> Fucking genius. Because <laughs> he's vegetables. Yeah. Yeah. Genius. Thank you, Joe Dante. Thank you, Stephen V. Thank you to everybody listening. I hope you enjoyed that as much as we did. We're out of time. We've got to go return some videotapes. But my name is Kit. And I'm Steve. And this was Streaming Things. Happy streaming. Noody, noody. Noody, noody, noody.